Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to the RC Retro channel. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at some upcoming RC10 projects and also taking a look at my RC10 collection. I don't really have a lot of RC10s, but what I do have here I'm extremely proud of and love very much because I think I have a nice little assortment going on right over here. And I also thought this would be an opportune time to showcase my collection and use that as a segue into these upcoming RC10 projects. So there's really a lot to cover in this episode, so let's just get right to it. So when I got back into the hobby, and I want to say 2017, the first two RCs that you know I had were, to me, a Blackfoot and a Kyosho Highrider Corvette. The Blackfoot was a re-release, and the Highrider Corvette was a restoration project. And then I was like, yo, let me go add another RC that I had as a kid, an RC10 Championship Edition. And then as I started going through eBay and the Facebook groups, I came across an original RC10. I believe it was an eBay, and it was an auction. And I think I won this for about $150, and it came all the way from Hawaii to New York. And $150 back then, I want to say it was a reasonable price, because right after I got this for $150, I feel like gold pans or RC10s, the original ones, started to skyrocket. And now you have beat up ones on eBay that are in much, much, much worse condition than when I received this one that are going for like three to $400. And again, that's eBay prices and that's what people post. But when you look at the sales or the, the sold ones on eBay, there people are paying top dollar for these. Regardless, this is a mid to late Edinger. Edinger being the first factory that Team Associated was located in. Um, I have a whole, I want to say, early episode of my channel talking about the differences between Edingers, how to categorize, if it was an early, mid, or a late Edinger, and the difference between Cadillacs, and that's a whole other factory that Team Associated moved to. So I'll post a link in the description down below and you can check that out. But as far as the bottom, I want to say this is in great condition. I mean, there are some scuffs back here in this area, um, but not really a lot going through the whole rest of the chassis. Um, but, you know, looks like it was lightly used. The body on here is an original. This is not a reproduction body. This is an original body. Um, it came in the original box that had the address on it as Edinger. Um, it is an A stamp. Um, and the stickers on here are um, MCI stickers. So the body is original, but it was actually the first polycarbonate body I ever painted also. So the Blackfoot, you know, I just put the stickers right on, but this was like a polycarbonate body and I was like, oh wow, this is gonna be the first polycarbonate body I ever painted. So my masking job isn't so great around the windows over here, but regardless, I think it came out nice. And then of course I use the MCI stickers on here and um, just, you know, the original owner, I guess, uh, put the body mount instead of right up here in the front where you could post it in the nose area, right over here, they put the body mount right on top of the steering and already had a hole. So I wasn't going to put another hole in the original body, so I just went with it. So you can see that right over here. But all in all, it came out nice. And I did give this a hydrogen peroxide bath to get the white nylon pieces a little bit wider because they were very, very yellow when I got this. So all in all, this restoration came out awesome. I want to say, I think this was like my second restoration. I think my High Rider Corvette was my first, and then this, and it came out awesome. And there are not the original um, electronics in here, but there are some vintage electronics in here, and I'll throw some pictures up for you. And I do have the original motor back here, the blue label Edinger um, labeled motor back here as well. So this is a really, really nice showpiece right here. Yes, this is a shelf queen. I never ran this. I restored it, and I'm just very, very pleased with it. And this was my first RC10 in my collection. So soon after my first RC10 that I restored, um, I saw that Team Associated had already re-released the World's Car. And I think this was 2017 I got one of these. I was reading a lot on the forums, and they were saying how Team Associated discontinued this car and didn't have much success selling them when they came out brand new. They actually lowered the price uh, to get people to buy these. Um, now, these are like a hot commodity and a new in box one ranges anywhere from, I wanna say six to $1,000. I 
at least that's what I see online. And people are going to say, well, that's what people are posting it for online. But hey, it's worth what people are willing to pay for it. And people are paying top dollar for these. Now, this is a re-release. And um, I got this for a thousand, I was about to say a thousand dollars here. I got this for $225 sealed kit and it came with an additional body, a RC10 Viper body that was painted in yellow and I'll throw a picture up here. And um, that's what I use on my, I end up using that body on my RC10 team car, which we'll get to in a second. But um, I did run this a couple times. I did have a protective film down here like um, a carbon fiber um, chassis protector on here. So I ended up not scuffing the bottom. So it's still in mint condition. The only little scratch I have is on the nose plate somewhere around over here. Oh, it's right over here, I think. And uh, that's about it. Other than that, you know, it has the box art wheels and tires on here. The, uh, I think they're Proline hole shots on here. And um, clean it up nicely. I ran it twice. I ran it on like, turf or astro turf on a baseball field so it really didn't get messy just a quick psh, um, air compressor clean off took off the protective film on the bottom still in mid condition and um, bodies painted in box art awesome a another nice piece to my rc10 collection right over here and not bad for 225 dollars compared to what they're going for today so not too long after i completed my rc10 world's car build i said to myself man i would love to have a championship edition because that's what I had as a kid. It was my third RC car as a kid. And well, to add one to my collection would be pretty neat. And so I remember this vividly. I was at my mom's house in Pennsylvania visiting and I was on Craigslist looking at the local ads and I came across somebody who was getting rid of their collection and they just so happened to have a few RC10s. I reached out to the person and he said, yeah, I have a close to mint condition RC10 championship edition. He sent me some pictures and he said he wanted $300. Now $300 back then for this was rather pricey. For today's standards, here we are, fast forward five or six years later, $300 for an almost mint condition RC10 championship edition, I think is quite a bargain now. Again, people are gonna pay what they're willing to pay for these, but I think $300 for this, not bad, right? So. Um, only have a couple nicks right up here in the front, but uh, other than that, this is, I want to say, in pristine condition. Um, this is a later championship edition. I want to say the championship edition came out sometime in 1990 or 1991, and like I said, it had the sixth gear transmission before they switched over to the Stealth. This one does have a Stealth transmission. Um, it's nice and buttery smooth. Um, it also has black nylon parts because when the championship edition came out, it was all white. And then as time went on, they started to swap over to the black pieces. And by the end, it was completely black. This is a mix of white nylon and black nylon. And that's why people online called this one a zebra. I wanna say there's somewhere in between when it was first released and when the final production run of these went where they were all in black. So zebra it is, pretty cool name, I think, because there is a mix on here. As far as the body, um, I bought this off of a seller on eBay by the name of Going Racing. And uh, he did a lot of paint work for, you know, different, you know, schemes for RC10 and sold them all online. So this is no stickers. This is all painted. The only stickers on here is where it says Team Associated RC10 and has the AE logo right over here. Um, yeah, I have a couple bodies from him, which you're about to see, but this is not the box art for the championship edition. Um, this is the manual art for the championship edition and I liked it much better and that's what I opted to go with. So pretty neat. Um, in case you're wondering, it is a C stamp um, because you know they started off with A stamp, then B stamp, and then C stamp. But again, it's in great condition and I even have the original motor in here as well. It's a um, Reedy modified Mr. Outlaw motor. It's in mint condition as well. So um, definitely a nice piece to my collection. There really wasn't much restoring for this one. It came to me in perfect condition, no cleaning necessary, and just got this body, put it on, and it's another awesome showpiece to the collection. I keep saying that, right? Awesome showpiece to the collection? Well, that's what they are. <laughs> All right, on to the next. The fourth RC10 I added to my collection was the RC10 Team Car, which came out in 1991, and right away was offered with the Stealth Transmission. Not box art right here. I believe this is manual art. 
And of course, I like that much more. And this is another body that was painted by that person known as Going Racing on eBay, who's no longer on there. I don't know what happened to them, but um, I really liked it. Uh, got the stickers from MCI, threw them on here. And as far as the bottom, well, the bottom really wasn't in bad condition. Right now, you can't even see it because I have one of these uh, carbon fiber um, chassis protectors on here. Uh, because I did run this. I ran this on the Port Royal Raceway with Harry. Um, it had the other um, RC10 Viper body on it in yellow that I got when I purchased my World's car. And um, I plan on getting this up and running again to do a versus video at some point this upcoming spring or summer where maybe we put this up against like let's say an Ultima or something. That would be kind of neat. Um, it ran pretty smooth on the track. Um, after a while, it did start to overheat because I think I had an 11 or a 10, no, I'm sorry, 11 or a 12 turn twister motor in here. Remember those back in the day, twister motors? And I don't think the ESC was able to handle it and the ESC kept cutting out. And so um, <laughs> we'd run it a couple times, a couple laps, and then it would overheat, we shut the camera off, let it cool off, and then run it again a couple times. And then with the power of movie magic, we make it look awesome. So, oh, shh, that's a little secret right there. All right, <laughs> but all in all, uh, I, I love the way this looks. This is when Team Associated ditched the gold pans and went for the black pans and uh, offered the stealth transmission right away. So I um, had to get my hands on a team car and I believe, I believe this one cost me $180. And um, I didn't even have to do a hydrogen peroxide bath on this one with the white nylon pieces because it was pretty clean so I just put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, cleaned up nicely, uh, put some oil into the shocks and got it out on the track. I did not run it with these tires. As a matter of fact, Harry lent me some tires to run it and uh, he let me keep the tires so these tires probably wouldn't fare so well on the track and I believe these are the original tires on here so that's nice and they are pretty soft. So again, I know what you're gonna think, I'm about to say a nice showpiece. And you're right, I am gonna say, it's a nice showpiece for right now, but I also am gonna run this uh, again. So this is one of the RC10s that I do run. The fifth team associated RC10 I added to my collection was another original RC10. This time it was a Cadillac, and I know that because one, it came in the box, it said Cadillac on there, and two, it came with the original motor that had the green label on it that said Cadillac Avenue. Um, I don't have the motor in there right now, uh, but this was a nice piece right over here. Um, a gentleman actually reached out to me and said he was selling it and wanted a good home to go to and he knew that I would clean it up nicely. And so I got this, gave it a hydrogen peroxide bath, cleaned it up, and take a look at this chassis. I mean, it's not in mint condition, but it's in excellent condition for an original RC10. Um, it is an A stamp. And the body on here is a Proline reproduction body. So they claim it comes from the original RC10 mold. And then I reached out to Andy Jacobson who used to paint for Team Associated and asked him if he could paint me up a body and he did. And these pink, blue, and white lines you see right here are all painted on. And the pink, blue, and the light blue in the front are all painted on and even over here is all painted. So a couple stickers on here, like the 10 and where it says team associated and the stickers up here. But wherever you see the lines that are pink, blue and white, or on the side over here, or even on the back over here, uh, or on the wing, I'm like moving this all around, or on the wing, those are all painted on. So it's very, very nice and um, just awesome. And uh, he painted the windows from the outside so it has a nice matte black finish gives it a little bit more of a realistic look i love it um, and again this is a really really nice example of an rc10 cadillac now again if you're wondering the difference between edinger and cadillac which i keep saying i'm going to post a link to all my rc10 videos in the description so you could check those out uh, I do a couple little like history videos from back in the day when I first started this channel on the differences and how you can tell. Also a very cool website you can go to is RC10 Talk and they have like the history of RC10 25 years through and they go through the, you know, the RC10, the championship edition, the team car, to the RC10T and the RC10T is their first stadium truck and we're about to get into 
some stadium trucks right now. So the first RC10 stadium truck I added to my collection was an RC10 T3. This is obviously the third um, stadium truck they came out with. It has an Andes polycarbonate RC10 T3 body on there, which Andy painted for me. Um, this is a runner. Uh, I actually cleaned it off after the last time I used it, which was a couple months back, but I never cleaned the tires off. It's running uh, Goosebumps in the back by Proline. Um, Proline? No, I'm sorry. J Concept Goosebumps in the back and Carvers in the front. Um, I love stadium trucks. I just love the way they handle on the track. It's a little bit easier than a two-wheel drive car. They're very forgiving. And um, because I loved this one so much, I ended up getting a low C double XT, which I will be putting out a video um, shortly as soon as the warm weather hits and I can get it on the track. Um, but I, this is, this is great. This, this stadium truck, um, you know, it's just came to me very, very clean. Just had to take it apart and rebuild it, but it has a lot of the blue anodized parts on here. There was a couple different models of the T3, um, but I'll post the link to my video uh, in the description so you could check that out if you'd like but just running a very basic setup here with a, a 21 turn I believe brushed motor in here a hobby wing quick run quick run um, 1060 ESC and a basic basic Sabox servo not one of those super fast uh, Sabox servos that are like 70 80 dollars and up this was like a like a 29.99 special <laughs> it's like their basic entry um, servo right there and this is perfect for for what we do out there so but yeah yeah it's very very awesome stadium truck i love it and um this brings me to the point where i'm going to segue into what my upcoming projects are for my team associated rc10 specifically an rc10t check it out well i figured since i had a couple cars to my collection for rc10 my collection would not be complete without having their first stadium truck the rc10t now, this is where I got a little crazy because I was in the process of talking to Phil and I had this tank, I don't know, one of those hang long, you know, bang good tanks that shoot little pellets out and stuff. And I told him I had it and I really didn't want it. And so I was like, dude, I'll trade it. You have anything? And he was saying, oh, I have an RC10 T because I know you're interested in Team Associated. So we just did a swap. I think I traded him the tank and I don't know what else I traded him. I don't know. I think I promised him another big gulp, <laughs> big gulp or something from 7-Eleven. But uh, yeah, we just did a nice even swap tank for an RC-10T you see right over here. And again, the RC-10T ran for a few years and they were like different models of the RC-10 that came out, RC-10T that came out over time. Um, I think Phil painted this body. I don't know. It looks like a Phil paint job. I don't know. But um, yeah. This one seems to be in really good condition. It has all black nylon on here. Um, it has a Novak Duster ESC. So the bottom of it is in not bad condition. I mean, it's a little scratched up, um, but I'll probably you know clean it up and put some you know carbon fiber protector on the bottom to make it look nice and clean. And uh, this is going to be a runner. And I have some parts here that I'm going to show you in a second that I'm going to throw on here. So. This RC10T is going to be cleaned up and I'm going to replace some parts on here and it's going to be a runner. Okay, I'm going to move this box over here and I have a bin of parts. Now at the same time of negotiating with Phil over here to pull off the trade, I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace who was selling an RC10T for 200 bucks and I'm going to show you, oh, it's very dusty, I'm going to show you the bottom of this. Shocks aren't even attached on this RC10T. Um, but the bottom is in really good condition. I mean, it's not mint, it's not excellent, but it's in really good condition. There are a couple scuff marks and scratches over here and then in the front as well. But for the most part, it looks really, really good. I'll get some close-ups of this for you. So, I mean, I think the chassis will clean up nice. It's really dirty though, but we'll do a little you know, ultrasonic cleaner, and then we'll get it out for a hydrogen peroxide bath to whiten up the pieces. And I believe, I believe the earlier RC10s, and we all know, came with the very slimline tires, and I believe Roar, I think it was Roar, outlawed, outlawed those, and then they had to switch to the bigger front tires. But I believe the earlier RC10Ts came with these, like, gray, 
um, aluminum shocks and then later versions or the upper levels of the version came with the gold anodized shocks you see on here. I'm not 100% sure. Again, when I do videos on these, I'll talk a little bit more about the history of the you know, RC-10T and you know what started off as with shocks and then switched over to this. But right now, I'm not 100% sure. And I don't want to say anything that is untrue. So I'm just going to keep it very simple and to the point. All right. So I think this will clean up nicely. I'm, I'm going to go box art with this one, uh, the original RC-10T box art. Um, and then... For this one, I'll probably do something um, a little bit more custom, but um, you know, period era correct. Like I'll make it look, you know, kind of vintagey on this one. So box art, not box art for this one. And uh, as far as the parts I have, I'm gonna try to keep this quick. This is this is gonna sink. <laughs> have uh, the Futaba ESC. Have the spur gears for this one. Two different ones. I'll throw those back in there. Um, so everything is really dusty because I got this stuff a while ago and haven't even had a chance to start this, but this is one of my goals for this spring and summer to get this done. Oh my God, I got so many parts in here. What do we have? I have a new um, gear cover right over here. I think this is a reproduction one. New turnbuckles. I don't know which one I'm going to use this on. I think I'm going to try to salvage the ones on here to keep it all original. A new RPM gear cover, probably for this one to dye it black. Is there one on here right now? Yeah, it's the original gear cover on here. You know, the um, the translucent one. Translucent? Yeah, translucent, I think. So probably switch over to an RPM one. Some new spur gears. Another, I think this is an original gear cover in here in the bubble wrap. Um, some turnbuckles. The ones I have over here from Team Associated are the newer ones, um, but these are the original turnbuckles right over here. Obviously, this is the aluminum and this is the black ones. Oh, the new the new body mounts for the rear. I uh, got these from Sean Miller. Um, if you need anything RC10, reach out to Sean Miller. He has his own Facebook group. But I got these for the um, shock tower on here. A new... Um, rear bulkhead because the bulkhead on this one is cut probably to accommodate a battery in here but I have a new bulkhead right over here a new front nylon uh, with the AE logo on it the new front bumper oh man I spent tons of money on this stuff new plastic ball cups for this one over here a whole new slipper for the RC10T right over here some more turnbuckles. Sheesh, man. I got, oh. Oh, these are for another RC10 project, which I'm going to get to in a second. Let's see. I have new carbon fiber front and rear shock towers, which I'm going to put on here. These are from J Concepts, so new carbon fiber shock towers. I got more spur gears. I lost count of how many stuff I was buying. All right. And then I have in here, this is, this is, Great, hold on. Some original stealth diff lube right there. A new uh, new diff. I got new oh, I got new dog bones right over here. Original dog bones. And then you probably ask, oh yeah, what do we have over here? New. They called it a Rulon disc. This is a disc you put in the slipper clutch right over here. Got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Some. All right, which brings me to this, okay? So that's what's going to go on for these RC-10Ts right here. I'm going to restore this to all original, and uh, this one is going to be a runner or a light runner. And then I have one more project that I really wanted to get to for a very long time. This is a Factory Works custom RC-10 uh, trailing arm kit. Basically, you eliminate the gold pan, you take the front end of an original RC-10, and the back end of the RC-10, which is the six gear transmission, you transplant it onto this chassis right here, and then you have trailing arms, metal trailing arms in the rear. So you basically transplant the steering on there, the whole front end, um, and as far as the back end, you have to get a motor plate, which is very, it's the same motor plate as in the RC-10, but you don't have the whole other casing that goes around it for the RC-10, it's just the, the plate itself. 
and it's just something to create that's custom and different and I thought this would be really really cool I'm gonna do uh, an RC 10 Andy's renegade body for this one um, I'll show a picture of the body that I do have that I'm gonna eventually put on here I got that painted by Andy Jacobson as well so this is going to be um, a nice little project right over here I hopefully we'll get to it um, sooner than later um, I do need an RC 10 though I'm not gonna chop up the ones that I have so hopefully um, Joe, uh, Joey Corners from Joe's one, one Minute in Joe's Garage or <laughs> whatever it is, Joey Corners, my buddy Joe has a few RC-10, so maybe he could hook me up with one or, or sell me one um, that I can use. I'm not putting him on the spot. I'm just saying, you know, maybe I'll negotiate with Joe and, and maybe get one of those, but I don't know. Joe's a really nice guy. I'm sure he'll, he'll help me out. Putting you on the spot, Joe. All right, so that'll be a nice project coming up. This is about a hundred, I want to say about a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars somewhere, somewhere in between there. I got it off of eBay. He Factory Works doesn't have much more of these left, um, but I will throw up a couple pictures, or I probably already have thrown up a couple pictures already. Um, so this will be a, a pretty cool um, custom um, little project to do. So yeah, I have a lot of RC10 projects coming your way. Um, and probably another, like I said, RC10 video where I'm going to put the team car up against another buggy from that time period era and do a versus video. We did a couple versus videos last year. We, I think we did two, and they were great successes on the channel. So this upcoming season, we'll do a couple more. So that is my RC10 collection and my future RC10 projects. Definitely an RC10 project will be coming up shortly i don't know if i'll get to all three of these but definitely one of these rc 10 t's will be um coming to the channel very very shortly in a project so i know this is a lengthy lengthy video thank you for sticking through it and i just want to thank you for your support and of course i'll see you all in my next video all right take care now